we are going to be looking at comparing linear, exponential, and quadratic functions. This unit, we've been working on quadratic, both linear and exponential, our previous units. Um, in your MJ, what I would do is go ahead and set up a section that's titled exactly this up here. And then each key idea, go ahead, um, copy down linear function, exponential, and then quadratic. Remember, you can pause the video to catch up with where I'm at. The first one, um, the formula for a linear function, I'm going to pull down this um, divider here in just a moment, see if you can test yourself. What is that format for a linear function? And then what was it for a uh, exponential function? And then now a quadratic function. What are those three different types of formulas that we've been working on? Here they are. Linear function, we know y equals mx plus b. And we know that the m is your slope, the b is the y-intercept. The shape is a straight line. Exponential function, we have a curve, and you have y equals ab to the x, where a is your um, y-intercept, where your starting value is, and b is the rate at which it's going up by. So remember, uh, that was the opposite of the b here, where the b was the y-intercept. In this case, the b is the rate of change or the ratio of change. Finally, we have our new one written in standard form, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Now, if you'd want to add in the vertex form, you can do that. It's the same thing for a quadratic, a times x minus h plus k. Both of those represent, um, whoops, quadratic functions. Don't forget the square, otherwise it doesn't make it a quadratic function. That's an x right there. Um, but we'll be looking mainly at standard form as we go through. These examples are again coming from your textbook from chapter 8, um, lesson 8.5. Here's an example then. Plot the points. Tell whether the points represent a linear, exponential, or quadratic function. This is a type of question that you may see. Um, essentially, all it's asking you to do is go ahead and plot these five points. You end up with this type of a shape. Part B, you end up with this type of a shape. And finally, a shape that looks like this. Based off of our shapes, we know the first one is going to be a quadratic because it has the shape of a parabola. Second one is linear. And the third one is exponential. Example number two. Oops. Another way to do it then, so first off, sorry, the first one was just based off of purely the graph and its shape. You're able to label it. This time, we're going to be looking at a table. So you can tell whether it's a linear, exponential, or quadratic based off of the um, differences in the ratios of change within the tables. A linear, which we know, is if the x is going up by a constant amount, the y is also going up by a constant amount. They have a common difference, and therefore, it is a linear function. Exponential functions, we look at x still going up by a constant amount. However, instead of adding by 2, remember the difference is that they're multiplying by 2. So it's um, increasing exponentially as you go along, go along, and it has a ratio of 2. Finally, quadratic functions. X, same thing, double check, make sure it's going up at a constant amount. Down below, take a look at this, minus 1, plus 1, plus 3, plus 5. There's a pattern within the differences, and here's where um, what we call the first difference. Um, the first difference doesn't tell us a whole lot. However, if you notice what we call the second difference, the differences in between the difference, then you'll notice they're all the same. In a quadratic function, the second differences are constant, meaning they're going to be the same number, whether it's a plus 2, a plus 4, um, or so forth. Let's take a look at an example, then. Tell whether the table of values represent a linear, exponential, or a quadratic. Well, take a look at the x's going up by a constant value. The y's are going down at a common difference. This, then, represents a linear function. Part B, x is going up at a constant amount. 
So y then looks like it's going up negative 1, then it went plus 3, plus 7, plus 11. At first glance, there's not a rhyme or reason to the blue. However, the second difference looks like they're all going up by 4, and therefore we know that that is a quadratic function. If needed, there are the on-your-own problems in the lesson 8.5 on pages 436 through 438 for extra practice.